my name is Tyler Potts and in this video we're going to be creating this scroll based progress bar that progresses as you scroll. It's built in Vue.js um, and it's it's pretty fun. It's quite a quick one. Um, the other one's been quite long, this one's going to be quite a quick one so without further ado let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is bring this over here. Let's bang that there. Let's drop this down here, give it all nice and even, and let's cancel this and clear this. Let's see the out of this project and let's make a new one. So we'll, so for those of you who don't know how to or haven't used Few before, you probably should go check out a tutorial on Few. There's one on my channel, uh, Few Starter, I think, or something similar. Um, but to, to create a new Few project, we'll say Few Create, and we're going to say progress, progress view. So this progress bar is built on a component. This article is also built on a component. And what we're going to do is we're going to link from outside of the progress bar. We're going to get the progress of this scrolling element. So we're actually not checking the scroll of the page. We're checking the scroll position of this specific element. Okay guys, so it is now done. We're gonna CD into this project file. We're gonna click uh, CD progress view. We're gonna clear this and I'm gonna say code dot and this is gonna open it up in my text editor. As you can see right here, it's opened up in my text editor. I'm actually gonna shrink this down to about a, what, a small screen. Not only does this mean we have more scroll hub for our pr progress bar, but it's also easier for us to see. So inside of our file directory, as usual, we're gonna be working in source. We're gonna get rid of the assets folder and we're also going to delete the hello world component from the components folder. We're gonna remove both the instances inside of the app or the template in the home. We're gonna delete this component, but we're gonna keep components because we're gonna be using a couple of components. I'm gonna clear this styling here too, hit save. And now let's actually run our surfer. So I'm going to say here yarn surf and this is going to surf my files. Um, so while that's surfing, let's start templating out our um, or scaffolding our HTML, our template. So we're going to say main and that is going to be the container for this. Okay, so once we've done the main, we're going to say the header and the header is going to have a H1 in it, which is just going to say scroll progress bar hit save and that will update so now if we go over here it's now running so if we actually refresh this page you see we just get the raw html with no styling at all um, so this is the first bit we're going to style up really quickly so in the style we're just going to set some resets we're going to say margin zero padding equals zero and box sizing uh, zero or border box sorry not zero um, these are my standard resets we're also going to set the body to be font not font size font family of a Montserrat and a sans serif gonna hit save and there we go that's looking a lot better we've got the progress bar or the title we need to actually style the actual main and the so we need to style down here we need to say main this is going to have a display of flex because we're going to have two different lines. We're going to say flex direction column, not columns, column. We're then going to say min height is equal to 100 VH, where overflow is equal to hidden. We're then going to go into our header component and our header component is going to have a background color equal to 313131 along with a height of 60 um, it's going to have a display of flex a justified content of center and an align items of center just to center the actual um, the um, h1 so we're going to give this a color of white so it stands out on the background we'll give it a font size of 28 pi Ooh, 28 pixels so it's big and we'll give it a text align of center Hit enter and as you can see, or save, and as you can see, that is now our header styled. The next part we're going to create is probably going to be the article. So we're gonna create a new component 
and this new component is going in the components folder and it's going to be called posts.few. I was going to do article.few, but because there is an article um, element on the page, we can't actually do that. So let's do posts.few and let's give, give it a template. So we're going to say template. Inside this template, we're going to have the article tag. Um, we're going to put a diff in here called content. Um, and inside of that, we're just going to basically put some content in it. So we're going to say H2 of the article or article title and the subheading is going to be a H3, which just says subscribe to the channel. The next part is going to be a paragraph times like five inside of that is going to be some lorem of 50. Um, hit save. Oh, we can't see that yet because we haven't done it, but so we might need some more paragraphs. I'm going to actually um, collapse that content area because it, it will get big and messy. Um, and then inside, we're, we're going to create these script tags um, and we're going to give it a name of post. And then we're also going to, well, sorry, not in there. We're going to do, we're going to set up the style, not stylus. It always does that. Hates me. It really does. Um, we're then going to set up the article style, which is going to be width of 100%, a flex of 1, 1, 100%. Uh, we've got the semicolon there. We're going to give it a max height. Now, the max height is going to count, account, count for the... So we'll give it 100 feet height, but we're also going to minus 80 pixels, mainly because our header is 60 pixels and our status bar or sorry our scroll our progress bar is going to be 20 pixels we're going to give it a background color well it could just stay white <laughs> we're just going to give it a different one but actually we'll give it ee and then we're going to give this an overflow of scroll so overflow scroll which will allow us to scroll so we can't actually scroll just yet because we haven't we haven't got to that point we're then going to say article.content oh, content, and we're going to give this a padding of 25 pixels. We're going to give the article.content um, h1, or no, it's h2, sorry. And that is going to have a styling of the, oh, we're going to make it a, a really, really dark blue. So we're going to give it a 1124F. We're then going to give it a font size of 32 pixels, a font weight of 900, a margin bottom of 10 pixels, and then we're going to give the article dot content. Uh, that's not how you spell content. H3, a font size or no, a color, sorry, of six seven six seven six seven night nice light well mid mid gray I'd say we'll give it a font size of twenty two pixels, a font weight of three hundred, and a margin bottom of thirty pixels. Once we've done that, we're going to say article dot content p, and the p is going to have a color of three one three one three one, a font size of twenty pixels maybe. Maybe we'll say 18 because I feel 20 might be a bit big. It might look a bit weird. We're going to give it a font weight of 300 and a line height of 1.5 with the margin bottom of 15 pixels. Hit save. And again, nothing's going to happen, but we actually need to basically import this into our view. So we're going to say import post from, and then we're going to say dot slash component slash post and we're going to add this components to our components object as post and now underneath the header we're going to say post hit save and there you go you can see we have this scrollable element it doesn't quite hit the bottom yet but that's because we don't actually have the scroll bar in place or the sorry the progress bar in place um, we need a bit more text in this as well, so I'm going to open up this content. Obviously, normally you'd probably pull text from um, an array. We're now going to give this some more um, more content because I feel like that's not enough. We'll say Lauren Ipson of 100. Um, we'll also give a P of um, 
we'll give three paragraphs more with enough uh, lorem of probably, let's say, uh, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70, we'll say 70. And that should do. Hit save. And now we have a lot bigger and a lot more space to actually uh, work with, which is great. Um, if I now close, well, we do need to set up some more in here, but first we're going to set up the progress bar. So let's create a new component and we're going to call this progress bar dot view. And inside of the progress bar dot view, we're going to set the obviously the template file. Inside the template file, we're going to have a progress hyphen bar. We're going to set up another div called, div called the progress inner. <clears throat> And there's also going to be a complete value on here once it's completed. So we need to keep these classes in mind. So we have the um, uh, we have the progress inner. We now need a span with also a percent in there or zero percent because that's how it's going to start. There we go. So now we have that. That's all the markup we need for the the progress bar component. We now can say name progress bar. And we will be passing props through to this one, but we will do that after we've styled and st sorted the, I keep selecting the stylus, uh, after we've styled the next component. So we're gonna say progress hyphen bar, and we're gonna say width of 100 VW, or actually, sorry, 100%, um, height of 20 pixels. Um, we need a background color of what's a FFF because it'll be white. Um, we'll give a position of relative on this because the progress inner oh, is going to have a height of 100%. A um, background image with a linear gradient. And we're gonna say two right. And we're gonna give this, let's try a different color. Let's say a pink. So we'll say ED008D to a bluey color, so let's say 2484E4. And we're also gonna say border radius of zero pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, zero pixels. So this is gonna give it like a curve. So now let's try and add this um, into our app. So we're gonna import We're going to import progress bar from progress bar dot view. Oh, it doesn't need dot view. Um, and now we should be able to say progress bar and in here just before the post, we'll say pro progress bar. Hit save. And there we go. We've got this colorful progress bar. We, once it gets to 100% and it sits at the end here, this will then become flat again, so it won't actually show this round edging. Um, but because we haven't got to the actual progression bit yet, um, we won't be doing that. So we've got a nice cool looking bar there. Let's now go to our post. We will um, style up, oh, not our post, right? our progress bar, and we will style up the actual text. We're gonna give it the um, progress, in a span, it's going to be a position of absolute, a top of 50%, a left of 50%, a transform of translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. We're then going to say color equal to 313131 and a font size of 14 pixels. So if we go back, you can now see it's in the center. Once this progress bar gets to just over 50%, we will change the color of this to white, but we'll do that once we've actually set up the progression of the progress bar. Okay, so we're gonna go back into the, sorry, the post now, and we're gonna set up our progression or our scroll-based um, our percentage. So underneath the export, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say mounted. Now this is a lifecycle method that only happens as soon as this component is actually mounted to the page. Now what we're gonna say in here is this dot dollar element dot add events listener is equal to scroll. We're gonna give it a function 
Um, and we're actually going to bind this function. We're going to say bind to this so we can actually use this keyword. So the keyword we used out here inside of this function because function will actually change the this keyword to be matched to this event listener. Um, so this dot L is actually referencing our parent, um, our parent container here, the article which is actually going to be what we're going to use that to get its scroll position and its scroll area. So we're going to say scroll top is equal to this dot dollar L dot scroll top. We're going to set up um, client height, which is going to get the, or we're going to say C or yes, yeah, C height for client height. We're then going to set up our scroll height which is going to be equal to this dot L dot scroll height. And the scroll height is the whole page, not including so this C height is the height of our actual article, um, not including the scroll, which is the height of this whole scrollable um, content. We're now going to do some math. So we're going to say, um, let scroll percent equal and then we're going to do some math but we're actually going to say math dot round and then we're going to put in here scroll top divided by and we're going to say c underscore height no s underscore height minus c underscore height and then we're going to times this whole thing by a hundred um, so let me hide that sidebar there and we now should be able to see that math.round good so that should now give us the correct thing so we're going to say this or actually we we might have to set some permissions up here but we'll say actually we're not going to bother with console logging it we're just going to say alert scroll percent actually no that's a terrible idea it's going to alert as soon as we scroll yeah um, what is that complaining about? Scroll percent is not, a, oh, it's value but never assigned. So yeah, we're gonna actually say this, sorry, this dot emit, and we're gonna say progress update, and then we're gonna give it the scroll percent. Now this is basically, what emit does is it sends up to its parents a Offense, and what we can do with that offense is basically call a function. So, in this pro or in this post, so we're going to get at, and we're going to give it the same name as we emitted. So this, and we're going to say it's equal to, and it's going to be equal to a function, which or method we're going to set called scroll or set progress. Now we need to set up a couple of things. We need to set up data, and data is going to be a function which is going to return an object and the object is going to have progress in here which could be equal to zero to start with we're then going to underneath data we're going to put in here methods which is going to be an object of methods and one of the methods is going to be set progress like we've called up here set progress and it's going to take a parameter of progress and we're going to say this dot progress is equal to progress once we've done that we're actually just going to quickly um show the progress up here so we're just going to put progress hit save and you see it's zero as we scroll it goes all the way up to 100 so we can just append a percent on the back of that and that will work now we've got this element, we've got it up here, but now we wanna pass it down to our uh, progress bar components. So we're gonna say progress, we're gonna bind this progress by using the semicolon and we're gonna pass through progress. Now, if we go into the progress bar for you, we can go underneath the name, put a comma and say props, and we can put in the name of the prop, which is progress. If we now go up here, we can actually change this zero out for progress with curly braces around it and hit save so now as we scroll you can see the progress goes up we now need to set the width of this so we're actually going to say um 
we're going to do a semi or we're going to say a colon style is equal to and we're going to use back tick or templating strings and we're going to say width is equal to progress and then we're going to put a percent at the end and hit save so now as you can see as we scroll the progress bar scrolls too we have a couple of issues once we get to 50 it this color starts hiding this um, number which makes it hard to read and when we get to 100 it's still two gaps where we've got the border radius so let's actually now give a class to this so we're going to set up a we're going to turn this we're going to bind this class so i'm going to break these onto new lines so it's easier to read and we're going to bind this class and we're basically going to say we're going to quickly delete the current class and we're going to put in progress we're going to use a ternary operator to say it's equal to 100 if it is equal to 100 then we're going to pass back progress inner completed or complete we're then going to say else pass back progress inner and then on the span, we're also going to then bind a class, which is going to be say, if progress is greater than 50%, we're going to pass back white, else we're going to pass back nothing. So we've got some classes now. Let's actually add those in. So after the progress inner, we're going to say progress inner dot complete. And we're going to say border radius is equal to zero pixels. So we just want to get rid of it. We don't want to say progress in a span dot white is equal to color white. If we hit save, as you can see now, when we scroll, once we get just past 50% uh, and we go to 51%, um, you can see it goes white. And as you continue scrolling and you get to, let's say, 99, when we go to 100, it changes from... Um, being a border radius of 10 pixels, 10 pixels to a border radius of zero pixels, making it look like a complete progress bar. Now that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. Um, it's a very basic one, a very quick one, but it's a, quite a useful one. It's something you can use in quite a lot of your um, applications, especially blogs and all sorts. Um, so thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. If you want to see more, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're new around here. So thanks for watching this video, guys, and peace out. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna